Now, by the way, this 15.4 does not reference the podcast number, but the textbook section, section number. And so what we want to do today is we want to talk about, now, if you were to draw a curve, let me explain this experiment here. Maybe you want to sketch this on the sidebar there. Essentially what you would have is you would have a burette. This is a burette. And I would have a uh, flask or something down here. And then I would have, typically we put base in the burette. And then you would put your acid right there. And then you would add uh, the base down into the acid. But I would secondarily have another device. And what would that be, Mr. Sands? Uh, your indicator. No. Oh, pH meter. This would be hooked yeah, up to a pH, pH meter. meter. And what I would do is I would add like one milliliter of the base, and I would record the pH. So the volume here and pH. Okay. And maybe your pH is, um, you know, 2.25. And then when you add two milliliters, it'd be, you know, 2.35. And then at 3 milliliters, it'd be 2.46 or, or whatever. whatever. And then you would plot this graph. And so this is essentially the experiment that's done multiple times, mm -hmm. and we've got different cases for that. Right. So when you do this, when you uh, titrate a strong acid with a strong base, it takes a very specific and distinctive shape, yes. which you need to know. Where on this side of the graph, we have pH, and on this side, we have volume. Um, and what would happen is it would start out really low, and it, it would stay like this, and then boom, it would jump up and like this. You've probably seen these graphs, but it would be a very steep curve. Mm -hmm. And the second thing you would note is that the equivalence point, oh, by the way, the equivalence point is always at the center of the steep portion of the graph. And this pH, if you have a strong acid and a strong base, the pH at the equivalent point would always be 7. Yes. And it would be very, very steep. So you could kind of sketch this. Now we want to contrast that with other instances and other cases. Yep. What if I had a strong base and a strong acid? Yeah, the only difference here is that instead of it looking like an S, it's going to look like an upside down S because we're starting with a high pH and going to a low instead of low going to a high. But this equivalence point is still going to be at 7 because it's a strong and a strong. Yeah, so you're adding the acid here in this case, where in the previous case you were adding the base, strong base. Okay? Now it takes on a different kind of a shape when we have a weak acid with a strong base. Mm -hmm. It's actually a similar shape, but there's something distinctively different about it. What's going to happen is it's going to start, because since they stay weak base, pardon me, a weak acid, its pH is not going to start down low down here, but it's going to start higher because it is a weaker base. Mm -hmm. And it's going to do a kind of a curve like this. And it's very similar, but I want you to notice, what are some distinct differences about this one, Mr. Sanders? Well, uh, first of all, down at the lower left part of that S, you get kind of a fl relatively flat area, and that's called the buffered region, so if you want to talk that. about that. This is the buffered region, which is where it's buffered. Right, because as you add a base to a weak acid, you start to create the conjugate, and you create a buffer that's at correct. that point. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, the steep part... Uh, right in there, that pH is not going to be at 7. We still want to look for the middle part of the steep portion, but it's going to be a pH greater than 7. Like 9, 10, right. 8, something. Yeah. It's going to have a, so at the equivalent, now why does it have a pH higher than 7 well, at the equivalence point? At the equivalence point, all of the weak acid has been turned into its conjugate, which means we have a weak base present. We have the conjugate base only there. There's only conjugate base. There's no weak acid. There's no strong base. At the equivalence point, we only have the conjugate base. So well, what would happen, this would be at the equivalence point. Mm -hmm. So if I had like 5 millimoles of this and 5 mm -hmm. of this, minus 5, minus 5, 0, 0, and this would be 0, plus 5, and you would have 5. Right. What you actually have, folks, is the A negative. So what's present here, I'm just, you know, some ion negative, and that is the A negative is the conjugate base of the weak acid HA, and since it is a base, it has a pH greater than 7. Right. All right? So if you really want to realize that, A negative plus water, double arrow, this is the equilibrium, would make HA plus OH minus. So it's if you the have OHs, of the OHs that the makes base. it a base. Yep. And so that's an important thing to understand is that the pH will be greater than the Very. 7. Very. And a great AP question is sketch the graph at the equivalence point. Yes. And if you get the pH 
you know, at seven, that would be a strong acid, strong base, like our previous example, mm -hmm. um, or actually two examples ago. But in this case, you've got to draw it so it's a little bit higher. Yep. It would look a little bit different, however, if you did a strong acid. What's one what of my strong acid, weak acid? Oh yeah, let's let's draw them together on the same graph. On this one, is that what I'm asking for? Yeah, I think so. All right. It's if you had a strong acid and a strong base, it would look kind of, that's not a very good, this is actually more curved up here. This is the blue, is the strong, strong. Now, if I were to do a strong weak, what it would do is it would do, I'll do it black here. It's going to look more like this. It would mirror the same thing. Mm -hmm. But notice that the, the pH here is a 7 and the pH here at this center is uh, greater than 7, 8 or 9 or something like that. Right. Okay, so that's how you can kind of compare that. And if you think about it, this is a weak acid, acid. and this is a strong acid. Yeah. But of course, well, acids can have differing strengths, can't yes. they? I mean, you, you can have a weak acid and you could have a weaker, weaker acid. Weaker acid, right. And so what would they, that would look like? And actually, here's a graph. You've already got this printed up. But if you look at this one right here, this is kind of a way to do it. If, if you have a strong acid, you can see the strong acid one. Yep. And then as they get weaker, you can see how the curves are affected. And an interesting thing is the number of milliliters of base required to titrate them will always be the same. Yeah, assuming they have the same molarities. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, the pH at the equivalence point, at the center of the steep part, goes up the weaker the acid. Okay? And conversely, um, if you have a weak base with a strong acid, it's just going to look like this. It's just kind right. of a reverse. It's just, yeah, it's just an inverted weak it. acid strong base one. You don't need to be too much. Now, there's a very, very, uh, very important very. point that we need to talk about. Yes. And that is a very cool point. If you are trying to find the Ka of an acid, you can do it by doing this titration. So we go back and do this experiment that we just talked about, and I would collect lots of data. You know, I'd, and actually, you're going to do this lab, and mm -hmm. if you're out in internet land and you're in chemistry class, if you don't do this lab, then your teacher needs to. Yes. <laughs> it's just one Tell of the most important. Re request it. Request it. And it's this very lab. simple to do. Yeah, you just get a pH meter and you keep recording the pH. It's quite simple. Yep. Now, what happens, of course, if you have the equivalence point, you know what it is, and let's say down here it looks like it's at uh, 10 milliliters on this particular graph. Mm -hmm. The equivalence point would happen, actually, this is the equivalence point. Right. Then you always look for what? Halfway to the equivalence Half point. Half the equivalence point. And when you go to half the equivalence point, just to, so it's 10, this would be at 5. Mm -hmm. You would go to 5 and find out that. And then you come across to this point and you find the uh, pH. And something very important that we're going to say, write this down, very important. Yes. pH is equal to the pKa at half the equivalence point. Yes. So if you know the pH at half, now half of the volume right. of the equivalence point, you can find the pKa. And if you know the pKa, you go 10 to the negative pKa, and that equals the Ka. Ka. Now the reason this works yeah. is Mr. Show with Henderson Hasselbach. Yeah, Henderson Hasselbach equation. pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. Right. And now when you're at the equivalence point, You've, you've added enough to neutralize all of it, but if you're halfway to the equivalence point, half of your weak acid has been neutralized, and half of that weak acid has become its conjugate. So half of it is base, and half of it is acid. Let me show you that. This would be like 5 and 5. You've added equal moles, equal amounts, yep. equal amounts minus 5, minus 5. This is the B, C, A deal. Zero. No, wait a second. I did this right. At half, you've added half. This would be plus minus 2.5, right? Yes. So you've got to change the, um, the Hold OH. Hold on. I didn't do this right. I'm sorry, guys. If you have HA plus OH minus goes to water plus A negative. Let's say you have 5 of this and 2.5 of hydroxide. Right. And you've right. added half the amount required. So at minus 2.5, that's 2.5. Yes. Minus 2.5. Zero, water we don't we can ignore. Zero plus 2.5 and 2.5 millimoles. Right. Guess what? 2.5 equals uh, 2.5. So uh, when you take the ratio of the base over the acid, it equals one. one. And the and log we know of the one log of one is zero. Zero. So therefore, the pH equals the pKa. 
at that particular instance, or I should say, add half the equivalence point. Yep. So that's an important thing to identify that particular spot on the graph. Now we should. Do we talk about polyprotic acids in this, Mr. Sanders, um, and that triple thing? It might be coming up later. I don't see it right Let now. Let me check. Hold on. Uh, Let's add one more thing, and then we'll be done um, to this particular um, discussion. How does this work with polyprotic acid? What's a polyprotic acid? Poly means more than one. So pro and protic, we're talking about protons, so something that has more than one proton or more than one hydrogen ion. So there'll be molecules of acids that have like an H2A format or an H3A format. So if you were to draw a titration curve of a, of a polyprotic acid, pH, again, versus volume, what you would see if it was a polyprotic acid is, and they're all, most of them are weak, you would see the hump, as we've talked about. But guess what? You get a... Another one. Second hump. Actually, that'll be more flat, probably. Okay. Now, what you would have, essentially, this would be what this is called, this first point, let me black it, I think. This is called the first equivalence point. And then the center of the second steep portion is called the uh, second equivalence point. And actually, at half of this, if you found this particular volume, and it was, yep. at, say, uh, 20, if you came back here to 10, then the pH right here would, would equal be equal to the pKa1. Yep. Remember, there's an A1 and an A2. And then if you were to take, actually, it's not half. This is, if you were to take this point, by the way, if this is at 20, this one, by definition, would have to be at 40. Third. 40, thank you. I knew that. And so if you were to go to 30, I'm getting ahead of myself. If you go to 30... Halfway between... Between, the not exactly half, right? right? You would find that here the pKa2 is equal to the pH. Yep. I said that backwards, but I think you get the idea. Mm -hmm. And a triprotic would be a similar kind of a deal. In a triprotic acid, you would have three humps. Now, I want you also to know something about the humps. The first hump is very distinct. The second hump... Not so much. Not so much. So the first hump, uh, if you will, the first steep portion of the graph is pretty distinct. The second one is less distinct, and the third one oftentimes is almost, almost impossible to see. Yeah. But there is going to be a slight hump. You'd have to go really, really, you know, in your in your table. Fractions of milliliters. Yeah, fractions of milliliters to see this um, little hump. But it would still be, if you knew this one, and this was at 20, this one would be at 40. I don't think I've drawn this very well to scale. Not really. And this would be at 60. Mm -hmm. Uh, or whatever. So it's important to understand how polyprotic acid, so this would be actually, this would be the triprotic protic, um, gra um, graph of pH versus volume. Okay? So, um, you know, um, I, I thought about going somewhere else on vacation. Oh, yeah, where's it? Well, you know, there's this place, you know, I, I love water, you know, I like to swim. Oh, yeah. Although I don't think I'd swim here because, you know, Malagra Falls. Oh, yeah, yeah, Malagra Falls. Malagra Falls. Yeah, you could uh, uh, get in your little barrel and go over Do the, the barrel thing, thing at Malagra yeah. Falls, yeah, yeah. But, I, you know, sometimes when I go, go, uh, go uh, on vacation, I get sick. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and I'm, I'm worried that if I go to Malagra Falls, I might get... Um, Malaria. Malaria. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a bad one. You don't want to get yeah, that. You know, I, I, get malaria. I think I might. We're we coming up on a break here. Um, we're going to Grandma's house, and I'm sure she'll read some um, Mulder Goose stories oh, to my kids. Oh, Mulder Goose. Yeah. That's a good story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, folks. We will see you in class, or uh, or not, <laughs> or not if you're on internet land. Bye. Bye.